Hello friends, today I'll be covering Cloudflare Workers KV. KV is their key value storage. KV provides an easy way to store and retrieve data from your Cloudflare worker. And best of all, Cloudflare has recently introduced a free tier, so now you can try Cloudflare KV for free. Now this is the fourth lesson in a series of lessons I'm doing on Cloudflare workers. So if you haven't seen the other ones, I would highly recommend checking them out and I'll link that in the description below. And just in case you haven't been following along, uh, don't worry too much about it. I'll provide some instructions so you can start right here. So a little bit about Workers KV. According to Cloudflare, a read from KV will respond as quickly as retrieving a static cached file. Workers KV is an eventually consistent database, meaning that it could take upwards of 60 seconds to propagate your changes. Though in my real world testing, I've seen that happen in about one to two seconds. Though even though I've seen it update pretty quickly, this does mean that it can't be used in applications that require atomic transactions. And typical of other key storage solutions, you can't search KV. It does provide list operations, but if you do require search, you'll have to use something else. For this lesson, we'll be using Cloudflare KV to put get and list keys. I'm planning on using this to store markdown files and then retrieve them and display them as HTML. For those of you catching up to the rest of us, I'll provide some starting where we left off instructions down in the description below. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a KV namespace. And I'll do that by using the Wrangler CLI. If you haven't already installed it, uh, check out the first video in this series on how to install the Wrangler CLI. So I'm just gonna type in Wrangler KV namespace create, that's gonna create the namespace, and then the name of the namespace. I'm just gonna call it files. And if you get this error, your configuration file is missing an account ID field. All you have to do is open up your wrangler.toml file and paste your account ID right into here. Hit save, go back in and rerun the command. And I can see that it was successful and I just have to add this into my config. So what I'm going to do is just copy this here go into my Wrangler Tommel again and just paste this at the bottom. And now these can be closed. Next, I'm gonna add the files to my ESLint config. So I'm just gonna add a globals here with files and I'm gonna set it to read only. So I plan on adding three separate files, one for reading, writing, and listing. And I'm going to go ahead and just add the imports before I create the files into my index.js. So I'm just gonna say import files from pages.files. That's where I plan on creating that. And then I'm going to create two more, one for post and one for list. And I'm just gonna call it files.post and files.list. And next I have to add the routing for these files. So if you're not familiar with this routing, uh, we did cover this in the first lesson, so I'd recommend taking a peek at the first lesson. Uh, you can also just look at the source code. I'll link that in the description below too. So I'm gonna create the route for the files and that's just going to call the files function and pass in the request. Next is my files list. So that's going to look like this. And again, these are regular expressions. So if you're not familiar, this dot plus means that it must contain one item afterwards, whereas the question mark makes this slash optional. And finally, I will add the post just by changing this get to a post and then changing the function that's called also to a post. And that should be all that's required to set up the routing in index.js. So the first file I'll create is the posting file. So under pages, I'm just going to create a file.post.js. And in here, I'm going to create a file post, and that's gonna take the request. Right now it's not gonna do anything, and it's going to export the default as the file post. And I'll be posting the request as JSON, so to get that JSON, all I have to do is await the request.json, and I wanna extract out the file name as well as the contents. And I'll just mark this as async to make this await work. And then I can do await files dot put with the file name as the key and contents as the value. So now you can see to add a key value into the files key value, all you have to do is call this one liner here, this await files dot put. That's one of the nice things about KV is the simple interface. 
And I need this function to return something, so I'm going to import my HTML response from lib responses. And then all I have to do is return my HTML response with success. Now also put does support expiring keys. So if you're interested in that, check out the documentation on Cloudflare. And if I remember correctly, this was supposed to be files and not file. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the getting of the key. So I'm gonna create a files.js here and I'm gonna copy and paste what I have from the files post into the files just to get me started. And here I'm gonna pull the URL off the query string. So if I have something like uh, my website and then files slash and then here's my file abc.md I want to be able to pull the abc.md as my key so for me to do that I have to turn the URL which is currently a string into a URL object and I can do that by saying new URL request.url and I'll just parse out the ID so I'll say ID equals URL dot substring and we'll say seven. And that'll give us that key because it's going to parse one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out and pull this in as the key. Now there are more sophisticated ways of getting the parameters, but just for the simplicity sake of this demo, I'm using this method. But in your real website, you'd probably want to parameterize uh, this, this query. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video on how to do that. Now we don't need line eight anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna change this files.put to a git. And instead of file name, the key I'm gonna be using is this ID. And I'll just set that to a value, which would be files. Actually just file. And here I can just return the HTML response as file. But that's not what I want. I don't wanna return the raw markdown. I wanna return HTML. So I'm gonna import a package called marked. Marked is going to convert the markdown to HTML for me. So I'm just going to import marked from marked and here I will take the file and pass that into the marked function. And now for my HTML response, instead of returning the markdown, I'll return the HTML. Actually, it should probably be HTML. Okay, I'm gonna clean that up a bit and hit save. Then I'm gonna copy this because I'm going to create the files.list.js page. And I'm just gonna copy this in as a template. I don't need marked. And in here, I'm going to delete this because I'm not getting anything off of the query string. Instead of files.get, I'm just going to call list. And that doesn't take any arguments. Well, not for this use case. It does take in some that have to do with the way you can filter the files and paging. But for this case where I'm just listing everything, I don't need to pass anything in. And this is actually an array, this files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a helper function, which is gonna take an individual file from that array and I'm gonna convert it to an li. So what that's gonna look like is a template literal string and I'm going to start off with an li and an anchor tag so I'm gonna say this is going to be slash files and slash file dot name and I want to display the file name also and then end the tag and now all I have to do is get all of my LIs by doing files.map, and I'm gonna pass them all to the file to li, uh, which is gonna return me array, and then I'm going to convert that array into a string by just calling join. And now the HTML I'm returning, I'm no longer using marked, but I'm going to return an unordered list uh, with all of my LIs. And that's it. And let's have to rename this to, from file post to file list. And I almost forgot, it's not files, but files.keys.map. So let's run the preview and see if this actually works. So I'm gonna npm run preview. 
there's an error already. Let's see, uh, preview ID in my config. Okay, so that is because we're running in preview mode. So it's not ID, it's preview ID. So I'll just change that and rerun again. Okay, so let's go to the files page. I'm gonna hit go. And in the testing tab, it's looking like it's getting a 200. And here's my files that has the ULs with nothing in it. Um, that's because I haven't created any files. So I'm gonna go ahead and create one. So I'm gonna post and my body is gonna be JSON. And I'm gonna say for this one, the file name is going to be readme.md and the contents will be pasted from my clipboard, which is just a uh, markdown file. So I'm gonna hit run test and I can see that it comes back with success. That's what it was supposed to. And I'm going to click on get again and I'm gonna hit run test. And I can see that here's my li with my readme. So this is the list page working. I'm gonna hit refresh here. I can see my readme. And if I click it, it should, oh, there is an error down here. I can see that it's um, got a URL substring error. So on the get page, I'm gonna pop that open. So on the files page, I, oh, I can see that I'm just calling url.substring, but this is a URL object. So it's actually the path name that I wanna run substring on. Okay, back into the browser and I'm gonna click on readme. And here's my markdown file. It looks like it doesn't like the, uh, the emoji that I put in there, but that's okay, because the rest of the stuff is working. I can solve that another day. So what did we do here? We created a new file to put a new key value pair. I created another file to list all the key value pairs. And then I created another file to read the key value pair. Uh, and the markdown that was coming out of that was also converted from markdown to HTML for display on the site. The API also supports deleting keys and I'll leave that up to you as homework to implement. And just as a reminder, if you're new to the channel, be sure to also click the bell icon if you wanna receive notifications for new videos that come out. And I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.